Over the past decade, I've hiked and backpacked over 15,000 miles as a full-time landscape photographer. In this video, you'll learn my top five favorite hiking and camping tips that will solve many of the problems that you have at camp and on the trail. Let's dive in and get started. So one really annoying problem that you're going to run into when you're out backpacking in the cold or damp conditions is you'll wake up after sleeping and the whole top side of your sleeping bag or quilt will just be covered in wet condensation. So what I used to do is I would lay my sleeping bag out after I got up to dry it off on the outside. And if there's not sun out, this can take a whole lot of time or it doesn't get dry at all. So what I do now to solve this is I take my camp towel, which is a chamois. These are supposed to be for swimming, but they dry things off extremely quickly. I used to dry my tent off. I used to dry anything else off and to bathe after a day of hiking. So use one of these. I'll leave a link down below the video and I just wring it out so there's no water in it. And when I get up, say just before sunrise or 30 minutes before I get out of bed, I'll just take it and I'll wipe down all the condensation on top of the pad while I'm laying down. And it's a lot easier if you're actually in the bag or quilt while you're doing this. And then just keep wringing it out so there's no water in it when you do that. And then what I do is I take the bag and I'll just turn it inside out. And it's gonna be a little bit damp still. And then I'll just get back inside of the bag with the damp side facing down towards me. And you're, it's not damp enough that your clothes will actually get wet, but that'll help to dry it off really quickly. And usually within 20 to 40 minutes, depending on how damp it was, it'll be completely dry. So I like to do this while I'm waking up in the morning, half an hour before I get out of the tent. And then you can just take it and let it sit while you eat breakfast or whatever else. And then you can pack it in your bag and it'll be completely dry. So this next tip is going to save you guys a whole lot of time with your food setup. So what I used to do when I first got into backpacking is I would have one food container and I would just eat out of it during the day. But now what I have is three separate food containers. So the first thing I have is my food storage for all the days of the trip besides my current day. And I just leave this in this scent proof container and just smash it all in there. And I'll leave this near the bottom of my pack because I don't really need to access it. My other two containers are Number one, I have one for daily food that I'm going to eat while on the trail. So this will just be some snacks and some other food that I'm going to eat while I'm actually hiking. It also includes coffee and a little container to make the coffee in. I just have instant coffee, so I just mix it in cold. And then any electrolytes or other supplements that you want for quick access. And this is going to stay in the outside of my pack in one of the pockets. Now why this is nice is because during the day if you're stopping to get food, it's a real pain to open the main container of your pack every time you want to eat. It's just slow. So it's going to slow you down a lot on the trail. But if you have this on the outside, whenever you get set up to just take a break, you can just grab it out of this pocket. So the third food container I have is all of my daily food for dinner minus what I'm going to eat during the day. So this carries my cook stove and it also carries my dinner and a few other supplements and things like that that I'm going to have with dinner. And this stays near the top on the inside of my pack because when I get ready to set up camp for the night and I'm actually gonna eat dinner, then my pack's already open, so it's really easy to get to. So dividing these up are gonna save you a whole lot of time on the trail during the day. And then the other thing I like to do is at night after I eat dinner, I will repack all of my food for the following day. So I'll take out my food storage container that has all the food for the rest of the trip and I'll divide up my food so I have it for the whole following day and I'll pack it into the dinner pack and then I'll also pack it in to the day pack that stays on the outside. And then in the morning, I'm not rushing around to try to figure out all of my food scenario. I can just go to sleep and know that it's already packed up. Next, we're gonna cover a few tips for selecting a good camp and also setting up camp. So first thing I do, when I'm walking and I'm getting ready to set up camp, I'm never using pre-designated campgrounds or camp spots because they never let me get to the right spots for photography and it's just not fun to have a planned itinerary. So. When I'm in the backcountry, I'm always looking for locations I can go where I can just run and gun. As long as I have a permit, I can camp wherever I like, as long as it's a good spot. So whenever I see a camp and I'm looking for it, I always like to be close to water if I can. So number one, as close as possible to water. So you don't have to carry water from the last point or somewhere else that you might be camping. After that, I like to look for a spot that I'm going to be really close to sunrise or sunset spots for photography. Because I want to be able to look my head right out my camp door in my tent and see if there's gonna be good light in the morning. It's a lot easier than having to hike a mile. You'll also find that you might tell yourself you'll hike a mile from your tent to get a good shot in the morning, 
but you might not when you wake up and you're not sure if the light's going to be good or not. So I always try to camp on ridge lines or directly next to where I'm going to be shooting. After that, I'm looking around to find a specific camp. So what you'll notice here, I put my bag down, but I did not unpack anything. Before you unpack everything, just leave it in your bag and start looking around and say, first of all, what kind of weather am I going to experience overnight? So I have a Garmin inReach Mini. I check the weather every day. So I know tonight's going to be partially cloudy. Wind gusts are going to be maximum of seven miles per hour, which is hardly anything. And there's going to be 0% chance of rain. Doesn't mean it might not sprinkle, but highly unlikely. So when I'm looking at this camp right here, a few things I see. If there was going to be a lot of wind coming from the south, I'm going to get blasted right here. So you would want to tuck yourself somewhere else where you're not going to get blasted. Maybe back behind this knoll here because the wind's going to come up over here and not hit you as much. But since I'm only going to have seven mile an hour gusts tonight, I'm not worried about camping somewhere right in here. Next thing I'm looking for, if you're camping under trees or near trees, look up. See if there's any big dead trees that might fall. There's some limbs here. Those are very unlikely to fall. This tree's leaning back this way, so it'd fall that way. See, this one already died, but looking for anything that might fall and hit your tent. This is extremely important if it's gonna be very windy or storming. If there's not gonna be much wind, highly unlikely one of these branches is gonna fall. So that's the next thing to look out for. After I've looked at all that, I'm gonna start scanning the ground for flat spots to camp. This is one thing that I used to make a mistake on and I see a lot of people do. They'll see a spot that looks like the best spot, they'll set their tent up, and then when they actually lay down inside, they'll find that it's very slightly off angle and it's really gonna ruin your sleep. So I get down low to the ground. I think that might be a good spot right there. I look at it first close to the ground and after I do that, I'm just gonna sit down and then I'll just lay down right on the ground right where I'm gonna put my sleeping bed. Now I know exactly that that spot feels good. And before I set my tent up, I'm just gonna clear any stuff off the ground. I use an inflatable sleeping pad, so it's gonna prolong the life a lot. And the worst thing in the world is to wake up at night, especially when it's cold out and you have a hole in your sleeping pad. First, you have to find the hole, good luck. And then you have to repair it when it's dark. So. Just cleaning off the ground like this is a huge help. Now, once I set my tent up, I'll show you guys a few more things I use to protect the ground sheet as far as keeping my inflatable sleeping pad all good to go. So here's another big mistake I used to make, and it's gonna save you a lot of time. So I marked on the ground where the flat spot is where I'm gonna put my tent right there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I know where the edge door of my tent's gonna be. So my door is gonna be facing this way, looking out. The other door will be there. So instead of unpacking my bag and dragging everything around, I'm going to put my pack right where the door is, and then I can just start unloading. So if it's going to be raining out that day or that night, I pack my tent at the top of the sleeping bag so it's easy access and I can have everything ready to go. But it actually fits a little bit better in the bottom, so if it's going to be nice weather, I just pack it at the bottom. Either way, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. So I have all my stuff itemized into these small stuff sacks and containers and then I can just shuttle them right into my tent after I set it up. Then I keep all my down stuff in a trash compactor bag, sleeping bag, jacket, stuff like that. And then on the bottom, I keep my food and my layers. Down pants. And then my tent and my sleeping bag go at the very bottom. I keep all that stuff in the trash compactor too just keeps it nice and itemized and dry. So now I have all that stuff on the edge of my tent and I can set up my tent and I can just throw that stuff inside instead of having to carry it around. So now that I have my tent all set up, I'm ready to set up my sleeping pad. So I use these trash compactor bags inside of my backpack to help waterproof it. That's a Dyneema backpack. So in light rain or even fairly heavy rain, it holds water really well. But if it's a downpour or I have to ford a river or something and it's actually submerged, then it's gonna leak a little bit of water in. So I itemize the gear inside these trash compactor bags. These are just two mil thick trash compactor bags. They're a lot tougher than garbage bags. And they're nice dual use because two mil thick each side means if I lay them like this, that's four mil thick of protection. And I don't use a ground sheet for my tent. This is Dyneema on the floor. So it's 
pretty waterproof. I've never had any problems and it goes up on the sides like a bathtub so it doesn't leak. So something also is really good to look out for if it's going to rain that night. Make sure you're in an area that the water is not going to all go down to one middle area. So if it's going to pour, having a slight angle to where your tent's going to be is going to ensure you just don't get stuck sitting in a pool of water. It can be super useful. I didn't mention that before, but I wanted to give you guys that heads up. So I put these down exactly where I'm going to lay. It's where I marked and it's flat. And now I can undo my sleeping pad and start loading everything else into the tent.